this brilliant English driver who's won so many races in the dark green BRMs. Even faster than Stoddard in practice was the Frenchman, Jean-Pierre Sarty, twice world champion and an absolute master of these twisting Monte Carlo streets. He's won the Grand Prix here three times. He drives for the great Italian manufacturer, Ferrari, and his teammate is the young Sicilian, Nino Barlini, who's also won a place on the front row. Barlini is the former world champion motorcyclist who made a very successful switch to car racing last year and is certainly a potential world champion in Formula One racing. On the second row is Pete Aaron, the American, now driving for BRM. Pete hasn't won a Grand Prix since he left Ferrari three seasons ago, but in spite of two bad accidents last year, he's still just as fast as ever. Yesterday, he left only a tenth slower than Scott Stoddard, number one driver in the BRM team. Everybody's Let's try and get the season off to a good start, shall we? Drive the car! Don't try to stand it on its bloody ear! They should show everyone the way home. Tim Randolph, another American, driving a Japanese Yamura, is also on the second row. This team's only been in Formula One racing for two years, and so far, the car's not been reliable enough to win a Grand Prix. But the Japanese have the most powerful engines of all. Nothing could be better than motorbike racing. Three times I'm awarded champion on my motorbike. I'm happy. Then I go into one of these, these cars. You sit in a box, a coffin, gasoline all around you. It is like being inside a bomb. Crazy, but of course, the cars are faster. And that is the most important thing. <laughs> I 
remember that at Monte Carlo, because of the nature of the circuit, you shift gears over 2,600 times during the race. That's an average of once every three seconds. No reason to expect gearbox trouble. On the other hand, I suppose potential problems are in the back of your mind all the time. I've driven this course six times before, and the way I see it, I've only got three big problems today, and that's two Ferrari starting ahead of me and uh, my own teammates got started. Well, um, actually, walking the course is just about the last thing I do on the morning of a race. It's become a bit of a thing with me. I do a lot of thinking, collecting my thoughts about how I run the race, all that sort of thing. Of course, um, it originated with my brother, Roger, you know. He used to do the same thing. As a matter of fact, before I started racing myself, I often used to walk the course with him. The funny thing about Roger, you know, the day he was killed, he hadn't walked the circuit for some reason or another. I suppose I'm rather superstitious about this. <laughs> I love the challenge of Monaco. Driving through ordinary streets full out is to me what racing is all about. It's a pity it's the only one left of its kind. In the pen the order is still Sarti, Stoddard, Allen and Barlini. Stoddard can't quite squeeze his BRM past Sarti's Ferrari. There's very little room to pass on these narrow... Entree. <laughs> oh, my darling, you're not ready? Ready? <laughs> For what? But you've forgotten. Hugo, the way I feel now, if I could remember my own name, I'd consider myself very fortunate. What have I forgotten? Last night, I told you I'd be by to take you to the winner's circle if Scott wins. Hugo, there's lots of time. The dungarees. Hugo, have you ever had ouzel? I have had everything, my dear. I was with two Greeks last night, and we drank ouzel. A lot of ouzel. And where, may I ask, was your husband? while all this uh, Greek and Uzo business was going on. Where he always is the night before a race? Trying to sleep. The danger? Well, of course. But you're missing a very important point. I think if any of us imagined, really imagined, what it would be like to go into a tree at 150 miles an hour, we would probably never get into the cars at all. None of us. So it has always seemed to me that to do something very dangerous requires a certain absence of imagination. Number 17, the Ferrari of Jean-Pierre Sartre, is still in front, but he just cannot get away from number 12, Scott Stoddard in the BRF. And the second BRM driver, number 11, Pete Allen, is only three seconds behind, with Nino Barlini and number 16 Ferrari breathing down his neck. and Stoddard fight for the lead. They're leaving Aaron and Barlini behind. Stoddard's really pressing Sarti. The French was usually unbeatable at Monaco, but today the Englishman is faster on some parts of the circuit. Number 17, Stoddard is
just out of the lead, his lap times are getting faster and faster, and he's drawing steadily away from starting. There doesn't seem to be anything the Ferrari driver can do about it. completing his 30th lap and increasing his lead over Sarsi. And there's the third man, Barlini, in his red Ferrari, now well clear of Allen. And he's just lapping a slower car. That can be tricky here at Monte Carlo. It's almost impossible to pass unless you can rely on the driver in the slower car to move over and make room.
Carlini in second place in the pedometer as Sarti completes 50 laps, half distance in the lead. That's right, driver, let go! Let me through! The They've both left Randolph in the first place to Muir. Damn you! Damn you! Get these people out of here! Where are the cops? You're a bloody liar! Please, you! I told you to take it easy with him. Apart from being a bloody coward, don't shut up here. You're a liar. Now get these people out of here. Now look, you're through with me. Now just get out of my sight as quick as you can. Something's happened. There has been an accident. That's what they come for. See someone get killed. <laughs> How did it happen? Bloody lot you care. Don't you say that. Don't speak Mrs. to me Stoddard. like that. You can stay here if you want. He'll be some time in search. You've got what you want now. He's finished with driving. Maybe we'll have some peace in our lives now. You think so? BRM est traditionnellement pourchassée par la mauvaise chance et c'est vraiment lamentable que la saison commence aussi mal pour eux. I didn't spin out is a miracle of skill and daring. And what do you think of this man? In the middle of the race, he decided to take a swim. It cost me two seconds. Oof. Oh, guarda che belle rose. Mm. From the manager. Hey, Jean-Pierre. You should fix that. I have something in my room. I just talked to the hospital. He's alive? Yeah. Jordan says I was blocking. Said I didn't give him a signal to pass. Did you? Of course I did. The gearbox froze coming out of the tunnel and I waved him through. He got on the brakes and locked up and threw me in front of him. Next thing I knew I was in the middle of the Mediterranean. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Gotta get a ride for the rest of the season. I don't know where. Pete, do you ever get tired of the driving? No. Lately, I sometimes get very tired. You know what I mean? Very tired.
it. Unhook it. Death is wrong, isn't he, Scott? He says you're finished. But you're not finished, are you? I know, Scott. Better than Jeff, better than anyone. If I told them you drive again, they'd think I was crazy. They'll think you're crazy when you tell them. But you will, won't you, Scott? You're in pieces now, but it won't change anything for you. You'll pull yourself together and get back in the car somehow. And for what? To be better than Roger. To compete against a dead man. They don't know anything about that, do they, Scott? Not like I know. They don't know it wasn't Pete Aaron in that car today. It was Roger you were trying to beat. Roger's in every car you try to pass. Well, this time I'm the one that's finished. No more for me, Scott. I won't be there next time. No more for me. Weird. I began to think you were not coming. I'm afraid I got lost. You need only have followed the car. I wish I'd known. I'm only myself to blame. I invited them all. First, a drink. And then I will introduce you to some people who will be able to help you. But of course, you must tell me more about the, the sort of things you'll be doing. Please. <laughs> 
Bravo, c'est formidable. Ça fait bien plaisir. Tu sais, comme dit Franjou, un bon jeté avec un bon cheval. In all this work, you go. Ah, this is work. It looks so easy. Jean-Pierre, I'd like you to meet Miss Louise Frederickson. This is Jean-Pierre Sarty. Merci. It's something that might interest you. Ah, a museum? Yes. Oh, Jean-Pierre, it's, it's, uh, it's simply not marvelous, Jean-Pierre. It's simply marvelous. Thank you very much. Your first nine. Hugo, you've got to come settle an argument about the 1932 Targa Florio. He's the only one old enough to have been there. <laughs> now, there is a dubious distinction. <laughs> That was an excellent race you did today, Jean-Pierre. Well done. Thank you, Bob. Very good. Thank you very much. Suppose I show you the museum. Obviously, if I don't escape from here, we'll never get past the law. You have to think of it. We haven't even managed that yet. Now. Hello. Hello. What did she mean, your first nine? Point. For the Drivers World Championship. Have you known Hugo very long? Since yesterday. Someone in New York gave me his name. He's offered me his influence, which I gather is quite extensive. Influence? For what? Well, I work for an American fashion magazine, and we're going to do an issue around racing cars. Yes! Now I have it. Of course. Louise Frederickson. You once did an article about my wife, Monique Delvaux, one of the 27 best dressed business women in the world, something like that. <laughs> Only 10. You were away at the time, as I recall. Yes, while, uh, while her husband is off racing motor cars, this busy woman executive spends long evenings in her office administering the complex affairs of the Delvaux Motor Company. I remember that part quite well. It had about it uh, the slight hint of uh, feminine prejudice for the uh, footless male. <laughs> it wasn't meant to sound that way. Is your wife here tonight? She never comes to the races. I don't know. I had never seen a race before today. What are these? Autographs. People in motor racing. Where are you? Over there, somewhere. party tonight? I wasn't invited. I invite you. There are a lot of parties tonight, aren't there? Yes. Is that the usual thing after a race? Of course. And I can assure you that if you don't come to the palace party tonight with me, you will be missed. And this man's daughter, will he be missed too? I don't understand. Do you know Stardar? No, but I find it difficult to understand how this sort of 
thing could be going on. Celebrations. When a man lies in a hospital, possibly crippled for life. Chère mademoiselle, if you were dead, it would be the same. More subdued, perhaps, the same. And apparently it doesn't affect you at all. None of you. I'm sorry. I guess that was all very rude of me. Before you leave, I want to tell you something. Not about the others about myself. I used to go to pieces. I'd see an accident like that and feel so weak inside that I wanted to quit. Stop the car and walk away. I could hardly make myself go faster. But I'm older now. When I see something really horrible, I put my foot down, hard, because I know that everyone else is lifting his. What a terrible way to win. No. There is no terrible way to win. There is only winning. start to lap you. You're still getting yourself into hopeless situations. It wasn't hopeless to begin with. It just turned out that way. There's a difference. But you didn't come all the way to Modena to talk about Scott Stardom, did you? I want to drive for you again, Senor Manetta. Alan. Last season with me, you did nothing but tell me what was wrong with our cars. Then you left us to follow hopes that lasted a season. Then to Jordan, now back to me. You confuse me, Harold, and I don't like men who confuse me driving my cars. 
I left you because I didn't want to become second driver to Sarti, a position you put me in. And now, I need to ride. I won a lot of races for you. Of course you did, before you became reckless. I want to be champion. Everyone wants to be a champion, Aaron. There is no distinction in that. I can be. At what cost? And to whom? All right. I'll drive for you for less than I was getting on my old contract. I'll pay my own expenses. You take the starting money, I'll just take my share of the prices. I'm not talking about money, Harold. Of course, I would not appreciate your doing to me what you did to Jordan at Monaco. To have two cars wiped out at a cost of $100,000 apiece is an unhappy experience. But I could afford that. I could not be in this business if I weren't able to afford that. It's one of the risks I take every time a car leaves the starting grid. But what is a greater risk, Aaron, what means far more to me than anything else is our good name. Our reputation represents desire for perfection of the highest quality. I gamble that reputation gladly because I have absolute faith in every car that leaves this factory. But uh, I will not risk it on a driver in whom I cannot have an equal faith. There are fewer than 30 men in the world qualified to drive Formula One. A mere half dozen, perhaps, to win. At this moment, I'm inclined to think you're not one of them. Against moving, Scott? No, the decision to come home was Scott's and Scott's alone. He felt with English doctors, he'd probably... What about next season? Scott, will you be ready to drive? He's ready to drive now. I just don't happen to have a car for him at the moment. All right, let's get him in. Hey, Jeff. Yep? What about these rumors of a divorce between Scott and Pat? Absolute nonsense. I know, but we've heard... Now, look, you... Mrs. Stoddard is taking an enforced vacation under doctor's orders, and you know that neither heaven nor earth can keep her from Scott's side. She's just on this holiday, all right? Yeah, all right. Okay. Good all luck. Right, thanks. Where is she? Forget her. Where is she, Jeff? I don't know. I want her back, you know. You're a fool. Jeff, you've never understood her. I know you think she's frivolous, incapable of any kind of understanding, but you're wrong. It's just that she hates what I do. I think she still loves me, you know, hard as that may be for you to understand. The trouble is she's got to persuade herself that she doesn't. I worry about what she might do, trying to convince herself of that. <coughs> Fine, thank you, David. Where's Tina? 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 Okay, Pat, in the car. How am I doing? Oh, you're doing beautifully. I, I look all right. You look fine. I'll just stop worrying. Good morning. Good morning. I expect uh, you would be back in America by now. Oh, no. We'll be doing this the entire season. I thought you knew. No, no. Does Guido know about all this? Of course. Arrangements were made. Well, I can see I'm not properly dressed for the occasion. <laughs> I should be wearing something fashionable. Well, your driver's suit isn't bad. Maybe you could start a new style. Spawn glass, foam pitting, waterproof, flameproof. Mm. What's Pat doing here? Oh, 
Well, she asked for a job, and I was able to give her one. She's, she's very good. Hello, Pat. Hello, Jean-Pierre. You're looking very chic in my car. <laughs> How's Scott? I don't know. Hey, cos'è? Cosa succede qui? Chi è questa gente? Fuori! Fuori dal mio garage! Tutti, now! Clermont-Ferrand, sur le circuit de montagne d'Auvergne, sur lequel se court demain le Grand Prix de France, Sarti sur Ferrari, 3 minutes, 11 secondes, 1 dixième. So far, Sarti has the fastest practice time, and if nobody goes any faster this afternoon, the Ferrari will be in pole position for tomorrow's French Grand Prix. Sarti's time was 3 minutes, 11.1 seconds, 95.1 miles an hour. The Clermont-Ferrand circuit is just 5 miles feel? of narrow, twisting like road. <laughs> Don't look so glum. It's an honorable profession. You'd rather be a dog catcher or something? Or something. Uh -huh. He's doing well. He could do better. Slave driver, this one. This looks very complicated. At first glance, it's only a different way to tell time. More precise. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand any of this. Not any of it? No. I mean, for one thing, it looks to me as though the spectators can't really see very much of the race. True enough, I suppose. Jean-Pierre, andiamo. And the risks you take, are they ridiculous? I mean, I might understand it if you made a great deal of money, but I'm told you don't at all. Some of us do, but money is not an important part of it. Then what is? <laughs> Many things. It's marvelous to go very fast. Why is it so marvelous to go very fast? Answer that one, Lisa. Hello, Chris. Hi. Jean Pierre. Hey. How are you? How are you, bitch? All right. A television star. Hey. Nino. The cars aren't good enough for That's him anymore. Down. Yeah. Interview me first, bit. I have had a fascinating life. The world yeah, should know well. it. I wouldn't want people to think I was unemployed or something. I was born a poor boy in chair at Sicily. Nothing to eat, not a crumb of bread in the house. I guess Manetta told you I came looking for a job. Every year, I would... Well, I think he should have found you one. Chair is right on the course of the great Tiger Florida race. Knock it off, will you? Chair. Knock it off? What's that? It means you would be well advised to cease. Basta. Basta? Yes. <laughs> Knock it off. I like that. <laughs> Monsieur Iso Yamura, qui vient d'arriver, verra ses voitures courir pour la première fois, ici, sur le circuit de montagne d'Auvergne. And now we're pleased to announce the arrival of the famous uh, Japanese industrialist, Mr. Iso Yamura. He's been racing Formula One cars for more than two years now, but this is his first visit to a Grand Prix circuit, and we're delighted to welcome him to Clermont-Ferrand. This might be something to get to eat. Well, you care to come watch my debut? Mr. Yamura, my name is Pete Aaron. You should not arrive on another Sunday. If this accident was the cause of the accident, I'm sorry. Mr. Yamura wishes you to know that he, of course, recognizes from photographs the well-known Mr. Aaron, although he was at first somewhat confused to find you in your present occupation. He also offers his regrets in regard to your unfortunate accident at Monaco. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, 
I was wondering if Mr. Yamura would consent to doing an interview. Mr. Yamura regrets he does not give interviews. Well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. See you again. Well, I'm off to a flying start. Well, there's always Nino. Yeah, there's always Nina. Was born in Cerda, Sicily, you know. Not a crumb of bread in the house, but they always knew that someday, someday, a poor guy, you know. Well, of course, there's no trouble between Scott and me. I've simply resumed my career. Well, uh, one of my careers. Mostly at Scott's urging, I might add. Well, it would hardly be a proper motor racing season without the Stoddard name connected to it in some way, would it, Pat? Considering what the Stoddards have been to the sport in the past few years. Well, needless to say, I'm present in a far more humble capacity than Scott would be. Still, I'm delighted to be able to represent the name for the rest of this season. Pat, when did you last talk to Scott? Can you give us some idea of how he's coming along? Oh, we talk two or three times a day. He's coming along beautifully. And uh, he wants everyone to know how very grateful he is for all the hundreds... That interview concludes this broadcast from clermont ferrand Tomorrow, beginning at 3 o'clock, there will be a live transmission of the start of the French Grand Prix. Hello, Hello. Pete. You're fine. <laughs> that was beautiful, Pat. Really beautiful. Particularly the part about uh, representing the Stoddard name. That was especially good. You'll have to be careful, though. If Scott gets a load of that kind of thing, he's liable to recover very quickly. You'll be out of a career again. You're very superior, Mr. Ann. The man who put Scott started where he is. Scott put Scott where he is. appalling thing what he said to that girl. He may have done it badly, but uh, he isn't altogether wrong, you know. The Stoddards don't exactly have what one would call a fairy tale marriage. Well, that's their business, isn't it? Not if she chooses to discuss it in front of a television camera. Back. Would you care for some lunch? Nino seems to have enough there for all of us. Bon appetit. That's what comes of a poverty-stricken childhood, hmm? This girl has died from overtiming. Enough food. I need the sun. The sun it will be. Sun, food, and sex. It's hard to think of them. Ten years from now, fat and married, with five fat children. Maybe, maybe they'll avoid it. The marriage or the fat? Both. You don't believe in marriage? Depends on whose marriage it is. The precedent record du tour appartenait à Jim Clark sur Lotus. 3 minutes 18 secondes et 9 dixièmes. Moyenne 146 200 à l'heure. Cette voiture était une Formule 1 de 1500 cm3. Tandis que les voitures qui s'entraînent ici aujourd'hui sont des 3 litres sans compresseur. I apologize for that. Why? Because it was bad manner. What does it matter to you what I do or don't do? Girl has to make a living. The last time a girl said that to me, she was stepping out of her skirt and asking for a hundred dollar bill. Making a comparison? When did you last talk to Scott? At Monaco. That's sweet. Why are we being so offensive? Probably because we don't like each other. Speak for yourself. Jusqu'à présent, ici, le meilleur temps de Randolph a été de 3 minutes 14 secondes 3 dixièmes. C'est normal. Now you see.
The object is to put the fly exactly where you want it to be. <laughs> what difference does it make? It's a big lake. Uh -huh. The difference is the art of it. We could wade out and hit the fish over the head, but there would be no art in that, would there? Now. Ah, now, is that where you wanted it to land? Would I admit to anything else? <laughs> where was I? You began racing because of your marriage. Yeah. When we got married, Monique and I, Delvo had just started competition, and I began testing cars. The next step, of course, was racing. Delvo stopped racing some years ago, but I kept on. Why? Well, actually, I think I've begun to wonder myself. But I suppose it doesn't really matter. A man does what he does. We do what we most want to do, I suppose. Now, you try. Oh. Here. The fire is too high. We must have a bed of embers. We will have a bed of cold gray ashes by the time you catch a fish. Have a faith, Nino. I tell you, they are fish. Now, very gently. Come on. Now. Very good. There. Is that a good place for it to be? It doesn't really matter. It's a big lake. <laughs> hey! My stomach refuses to accept your promises any longer. If there were some beefsteak, I would cook you meat in the style of the Auvergne. An excellent idea. There is no beefsteak. We will have fish. <laughs> in the house, either behind the cheese, in the cooler, beefsteak. We will save some for you, because there are no fish in this lake. Go away, Nino. You are too close. Why aren't you married? Well, that's not a very subtle question, is it? I need all my subtlety for the trout. How do you know I'm not married? I have noted the unmarried woman's brave air of independence mingle with vague longing. <sighs> independence, maybe. Vague longings. I wasn't aware of that. Something perhaps only a man would see. Or imagine. Well, no vague longing then, hmm? But not too much independence either, I hope. Very bad for a woman to be too independent. Very bad for whom? I like to be free. I like traveling. I like making my own decisions. Meeting new people, working. I like to be free. I was married once. But he was in love with someone else. You going to win tomorrow? Probably.
Could we declare a truce long enough for you to buy me a drink? Sure. See the play? I'll have one of those. Let me show us. Well, Sardi did it again. I drove a good race. How do you like your new job? It's what I've always wanted to do. You know, I've known you for, what, two and a half years. And all I know about you is that you drive cars. That's all anyone knows, so far as I can tell. You've just written my biography. The silent and secretive Pete Aaron. Inside Pete Aaron. What's Pete Aaron really like? It'll never sell. Will you give me a lift back to the hotel? You know, I'll never understand why none of you get this sort of thing out of your systems on the track. We all drive like maniacs. I've left Scott, you know. Really? Yes, I know. Got a great sense of timing. You think I should be at his bedside, nursing him back to health and vigor? I guess I'm just an old-fashioned boy at heart. You don't understand. I left him because he won't quit. He won't stop racing. And I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't stand it. Do you know what he does the night before a race? He lies in bed and sweats. That would be like for a woman to live with that. Will you go back to America when you finished with your click click? Yes, of course. You couldn't be persuaded to remain in Europe. My life is in America. What is your life? What is it? Hmm? I never thought about that, I suppose. Well, think about it. <sighs> Friends. Mm -hmm. Work. That's my life. My friends and my work. Well, one needs those. But, uh, what do you need now? Nothing. Liar. Come with me, Louise. Where? To a place I have in Monza. I have to go there to test a new car. They are three weeks before the Belgium Grand Prix. We could leave tonight, after the party. Come with me. And your wife? We share nothing but our business interests. Nothing. What do you think we would share? More than that. A bed? More than that. With luck. Luck has nothing to do with it.
Why do you all do that? Do what? Wear your sunglasses on top of your head. I don't know. It looks ridiculous. I guess you're going to the party tonight. No. You? No. What are you going to do about dinner? How many guesses do I get? Nine. Guesses? O'clock. Your message. Yes. I was hoping it would reach you in time. Well, I thought... Well, you do speak English. Yes, but not for the press. I hope you will forgive me. That's quite all right. There have been times when I wish I'd been able to pull something like that myself. I gather, then, that you didn't ask me here as a reporter. Will you join me in some tea? Some years ago, when I decided to race cars, I tried to buy the Jordan BRM company. Oh, yes, I had heard that. Impatience on my part. I also manufacture radios and sewing machines. In order to save time, I wanted a proven product. That was not to be, however. Racing cars are not merely another product. They require great attention if any success is to be hoped for. Then that's why you're here. I have been racing my car in Formula One for two years and have yet to win my first Grand Prix. I intend to win by whatever means are open to me. That's the right attitude. All you have to do is go fast enough and long enough. And with the best drivers. Do you want a job with me? Driving? Driving, of course. Who are you dumping? Dumping? Oh, which one of your drivers are you getting rid of? Neither one. I am entering a third car. That'll be expensive. Yes. You've got a driver? My racing headquarters is at Silverstone in England. Can you be there next week? Yes, sir. We must begin to think about Spa. Next week, then. By the way, you are a terrible broadcaster. Oh, uh, Mr. Aaron, if giving you the job would have meant firing one of the other drivers, would you still have taken it? Good. Is it true what you said about Scott? What? About not being able to sleep tonight before a race? Mm-hmm. A man like that should be in some other line of work. I'll bet you sleep like a baby. I'm divorcing him. Are you? Why tell me? Well, because I don't think you were entirely joking when you said you're an old-fashioned boy at heart. And old-fashioned boys have old-fashioned scruples. 
About what? About other people's wives. I don't follow you. Like hell you don't. Mimo, Jean-Pierre. Che piacere di vederla. Mimo, Come va? good to see you. I would like you to meet Mr. Rickson. Molto piacere. How do you do? Come sta? Si trattengono qui qualche giorno? Yes, there's luggage in the car. Raffaele? Sì, signore. Per favore, vuol prendere i bagagli che sono nella macchina? Con permesso. Prego. Come, I'll show you around. of this club? The only one who keeps an apartment here. In fact, I have the only apartment. Jean-Pierre Sarti, world champion, 1961. Oh. So quiet. Appreciate it while you can. At Grand Prix time, crowd, excitement, noise, terrible. Do you like a drink? No. Are you very tired? No. Health, wealth, and happiness. You are very greedy. No. Hopeful. There are seven more races. Yes, seven. Then? Do you want to think that far? No. Good. Now I feel marvelous. Marvelous. And you? Yes. Smile for the cameras. Come.
As you can see, we work day and night here to get the car ready. I'll take your word for it. We must immediately mold the cockpit for you. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, too long. I like what you've done here. Thank you. I was afraid it might have offended. Offended? How? My not adapting to your ways. No, not at all, sir. I promise you, if I'm ever in Japan and I entertain you for dinner, you'll get a Ford. Fair enough. Right after the war, my house in Tokyo was used by an American general and his family. When it was returned to me, it had flowered wallpaper, three new bathrooms, and uh, four new closets. Americans, I think, are overdevoted to bathrooms and closets. Well, we accumulate things. And then you lock them away in closets. And the bathrooms. No, no, you don't get me on that one. Uh, were you in the war? Yes, and you? Uh, no, I, I missed it by a year. In the war, I was a fighter pilot. I shot down 17 American planes. Okay. I believe that some things must not be left unsaid. There will come a time when you will ask yourself, what did he do in the war, this man, Yamura? Mr. Yamura, I like you. Why? Well, because... Because you come right to the point. In a sense, you are here because you drive a car the way I conduct my business. You come right to the point. Hello, Mrs. Stoddard. Jeff. Nice to see you. Scott. That's okay. Just get me the car. All right, come here. Hello, Mother. So good to have you. Well, how are you? Your place looks terrific. Thanks. Hello. Welcome home. Thank you. Thanks. Let me take my hand. Stay for lunch, Jeff. Lunch. I should have thought you'd have cleared this lot out long ago. Roger's dead. Just too bloody morbid. 
Where are your own things? I don't know. Around somewhere. Because they're nothing compared to this lot. Something to shoot for, old boy. You gotta have something to shoot for. Okay, Jeff, you can say what you're thinking. What am I thinking? That I haven't got all this to shoot for anymore. But you're wrong, you know. Quite wrong. What really scares me here at Spa is driving into a cloudburst. You're doing 160 in the dry, then you're suddenly driving into a wall of rain. Can't even see the car in front. Just like trying to swim underwater in the dark. Please, Bob, in a moment. The point is, gentlemen, the road condition on the approach to the SS before Stavolo have not been improved over last year. Is anything, they're worse. Well, I must say, I don't see how they could possibly be worse than last year. Let's write them a letter. They file letters. A strongly worded letter, official, from the Driver Association. A special file for strongly worded letters from the Association. <laughs> are we going to talk about calling this race off to the Venerine? No, no, no. Please, Richie, yes. one thing at a time. The subject is road condition. I haven't changed the road in 10 years. I'm not allowed to do it now. Look, we all know that you're taking your life in your hands just driving this course in the rain. So when are we going to do something about it? A strongly worded a letter demanding that the road be paved in the worst of places. the road by tomorrow, so what's the point in talking about it? That's what I say, but we talk about this business of rain every year. It's damn well time we did something about it. Well, let's demand the council if it rains. You can't cancel this place. Gentlemen, gentlemen, what about the flag marshalling? Find out which room they're in. Don't Come on, then, just find out. What are you doing here? Oh, oh how are you? How are you? How are you? you? How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Scott! Hi! How are you? What do you want to talk about, Pete? Really, Scott, this isn't in very good taste. It's very good, darling. <laughs> it's very good. Isn't it, Aaron? I'm afraid you got a point, Scott. He has a point. What do you want, Scott? You. You mind, Aaron? I'd like to have a word with my wife alone. for a start. Why do you say that? It's true. If you've missed me, it's only because you haven't had your damn cars to fill your life. That's all I've ever been good for, something for you to do between races. Why don't you stop belittling yourself? Don't psychoanalyze me. I'm sorry. I hate that sort of thing myself. You walk in here and calmly ask him to leave. 
and expect me to believe you care one way or another about me. What do you want me to do? Assault him with my crutches? That's not very funny. No, it isn't. I do care. More than I can talk about. That isn't getting us anywhere, is it? I want you back, Pat. I'm going to be driving again pretty soon. I no, need you no, with me. No, no, no. I told you, Scott, I can't do it. I can't live like that. I won't. What about him? He drives. It's different with him. Why? It just is. Because you don't love him. I don't know what that has to do with anything. You know one of the most beautiful things about a car? If it isn't working properly, you can strip the skin off, expose the insides, find out exactly where the trouble is, take out the faulty part and replace it with a new one. If only we could do that with people. Good luck. Clark has nothing to do with this either. Why?
into the first lap and already he's clear ahead of the second car. It's three down on Jim Mura.
Drove a good race. We'll see how good he is at Zandvoort. Paris is impossible, this will be. I must go right to my dinner. The car, it's completely wiped out, you see. It would be necessary to. Salo! Salo! Ah! Salo! 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 Bon Salo! It will be necessary to test a new one for the number green. A very difficult course, but uh, one of the most beautiful you will. Oh, stop! Thing is, will it start? It'll start. Yeah, Roger had some very big days in this car.
Coming into the pits now is Scott Stoddard in the BRM. The Dutch Grand Prix here at Zandvoort tomorrow will be his first race since his accident at Monte Carlo in May. His serious injuries must be extremely painful still. How did I do? The car just set a new lap record. The whole BRM crew look very pleased. <laughs> right, you owe me a bottle of the best. The fastest lap so far is for yes, Pete Arrow. indeed I do. Yemura. One minute, 26.5 seconds, 108.5 miles an hour. Aaron, the American driver, won the last two Grand Prix at Spa in Belgium and the German Grand Prix last week at the Nürburgring. Ring. He now shares the lead in the World Championship with 18 points, exactly the same as the Ferrari driver, Jean-Pierre Sarty, the Frenchman. Sarty's best practice time so far on this 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit is one minute, 27.1. Now here's Stoddard's best lap, one minute, 25.9 the fastest lap ever on this circuit. What a wonderful comeback for this brave young driver.
per me va bene. Then it seems to be all right. Of course it seems to be all right. It's always all right when you're around. Then there is nothing wrong, is there? He stuck in practice yesterday and he still doesn't feel right. But he doesn't stick now. I'm telling you, he does. Jean-Pierre, just because you have been running battery lately, there's no reason to take these things out on me. If you wanted the office this afternoon, just say so. I'm here to race. Understand? To race. There you are, my beauty. <laughs> if it's all over, my man. It better all be there. Half of it's mine. Mm, does that look like seventeen thousand dollars to you? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Marvel. That's what you are, Scott. A bloody marvel. <laughs> What you did here. I know. I don't have to see it up there to know. It's bad enough to lose without having to watch yourself do it. What's the point of this, anyway? To see if we can determine why you are losing. Well, you're not going to find the answer up there. What about your other two drivers? Why aren't they here? Why only me? Because they are not winners. But you are. You are losing to a man who needs almost to be carried to and from his car. How can that be? Because he's driving better than I am. He's making fewer mistakes. That's why anyone wins. Exactly. Uh, now, shall we turn our attention to the mistakes? I must say. Marlini's first race here at Grand Hatch, but his teammate Jean-Pierre Sarty of France, the number one Ferrari driver, and Pete Allen of the Yamura team have both driven before here on England's premier circuit. The second Yamura driver, Tim Randolph, comes from the United States, as does Pete Allen, who's already won the Belgian and German Grand Prix. There are 24 starters in this British Grand Prix. They're on the dummy grid now, getting last-minute instructions from the team managers. There's BRM driver Bob Turner. Mr. Yamura himself is with Pete Allen. And there's the winner of the last three Grand Prix, Scott Stoddart, who's still recovering from his Monte Carlo injuries, and leads the World Championship with only two races to go. There's Jimmy Clark, the Scotsman, who's twice been World Champion. That's the signal to clear the dummy grid. The engines are starting up now, and the mechanics and photographers are moving off the track. Now the field rolls forward to the final grid, where they'll be held for just a few seconds before the starter comes off to the Union Jack, and then the British Grand Prix will be underway.
Shifts like that, the car will never last. It'll last longer than he will. He's finished already. Marlene is the leader, but he's not far ahead of Starsky and Aaron. Here's Stoddard coming into the pit, very slowly. My goodness, he looks as if he's on the edge of collapse. What a shame. He was driving a beautiful race. Scott Stoddard does seem to be in a bad way. Pat, His retirement certainly puts a new complexion on the race. Marlini leads, but Ferrari team leader Sarsi, Aaron and Rint all have the Sicilian in their sights. There's a tremendous battle for second place between Sarsi and Aaron. Although there's one more world championship race still to go at Monza in Italy, the result here at Brands Hatch is very important to both these men. Iso Yomura himself is dedicated to winning the Constructors' Championship and Aaron is his only hope here at Brands. His second car, driven by Tim Randolph, blew up its engine early in the race. He's not far ahead of Sarti, Aaron, and Rin. Last lap, only one lap to go. Sarti and Aaron are very close to Barlini now. But Aaron hasn't much chance of getting past both Ferraris. This is going to be the most exciting finish of the Grand Prix season so far. Tim Randolph. 
From here, it looks as though Pete Allen's on his feet. He must be okay, but I bet Are you all right? Hard I'm okay. For the last few seconds of the I'm race. okay, I'm okay. It looked as though it was losing fuel right? along the bottom yeah, what do you make? last time round. Seeker! It certainly looks I'm like a regular ball of fire. fire. A fire like this is what these drivers are most afraid of. So nowadays, their fireproof Nomex overalls give them a good deal of protection. Get out of here! Get must out. keep back. Please keep back. ready to go round on his lap of honor. The team manager of Ferrari is there too. And there's a beautiful bird coming up and joining us. Hey, Nino. Nino Barlini, excuse me. Congratulations. How do you feel after that splendid victory? My neck hurts, my leg, my arm is bleeding. And that's been wonderful! Well, I don't know if you've had time to realize this, but this means that you're one point ahead of Sergeant Stoddard, two points ahead of Pidara. Of course I realize it! And with one race to go at Monza, the man who wins at Monza will be the world champion. I am the man! This is a chance for spectators to get a good look at He's obviously got a great future in that world. Yeah, come in. Bloody awful. Who are you? You uh, get to sit down. This has been a ridiculous few weeks, hasn't it? Is it? Well, I mean, seeing each other at the races and not... Well, ignoring each other. Trying to. I've been alone. You know that, don't you? Pete said you had guts and I... I'm not really interested in what he says. I certainly don't want to discuss him with you. I've told you that. I didn't mean. I meant that when he said you had guts, I said you were only stubborn. I just wanted to tell you that he was right and I was wrong. Watching what you've been doing these past few weeks, you shouldn't have been doing it alone. Yeah, well, there's only room for one in the car, you know. I don't mean that. You know I don't. I know. It's a joke. Do you still want me, Scott? Yes. I still feel the same about what you're doing. It hasn't changed, you know. I think you're a fool. But, um, I haven't changed either, you know. I mean, I really can't promise you anything. That's all right. That's the problem, really. People promise each other too much.
What's wrong, Jean-Pierre? What is it? There's nothing you can do about what's wrong with me, Louise. I won't admit that until I know what's troubling you. I suppose what's wrong with me is my life. But I can't change it. Or won't. So there's nothing you can do for me. What's wrong with your life? I've begun to see the absurdity of it. All of us. Proving what? That we can go faster and perhaps remain alive? Nino gambling his life for a trophy, then fills it with beer and does tricks. Stoddart filling himself with drugs in order to drive and still passing out with the pain. Don't you see how absurd it all is? Who cares? I thought you cared. For yourselves. I didn't know you asked of anyone else. Nevertheless, others do care. A hundred thousand of them care today. And did you see them rush to see Peter burn? Did you see the looks on their faces? I saw. For the first time today, I really saw those faces. But not all of them, Jean-Pierre. There are some who come for that. For the accidents and the fires. But the others... The others ride with you, Lee. You put something in their lives that they can't put there themselves. Are you one of those? It does it not. Yes, it does. Maybe I am one of those. When I came here three months ago, there was a space in my life that needed to be filled. You've done that. You and I suppose the excitement of what you do you offered me these things, Jean-Pierre. You can't condemn me now for having accepted them. No, I don't condemn you for that, darling. Sorry. Jean-Pierre, you can stop. If you feel as you do, you can stop now. No. Not so easy. Not so easy. Not so easy. For the Italian Grand Prix at the Monza Autodrome, they're using a combination of the banked oval high-speed track and the road circuit. The whole thing comes to almost six and a quarter miles, just over half of this length being the road circuit, with its fast corners and long straights. By itself, it's one of the fastest circuits in the world, and combined with the oval track, it should give some phenomenal speeds. Hasn't my car arrived, Guido? It's no longer my hands, Jean-Pierre. Perché la mia macchina non è ancora arrivata? È ancora in fabbrica. Ma le macchine di Nino Ludovic sono già qui da un'ora. Sì, è vero, ma la tua la stanno ricontrollando. Comunque, si tratta di un problema di carattere tecnico che non mi riguarda. Come non ti riguarda? Ma io se non ho abbastanza tempo per fare le prove, il problema sarà tuo e come il mio. Trouble. My car hasn't arrived from the factory. The same thing has happened before. Not to me, but to other drivers who have fallen from grace. Pressure. Pressure? Mm -hmm. Is there enough of that as it is? Mm. You have to grasp the mind of Signor Manetta, my darling. If a driver can be reached by those tactics, it means he probably will fear for his place on the team. That is exactly what Manetta wants. 
because that driver will try harder, harder to win. He will perhaps take a risk which he would ordinarily avoid. And risks are always risks. But the car will come. Well, if it doesn't, I'll use my influence and I'll get you the best seat in the grandstand. Marlini ha compiuto questo giro con la media di 250 km h No sign of it? No. Don't worry, Jean-Pierre. That's what they want you to do. He makes a great mistake then. Are you sure you wanted it to come? maximum of about 180 miles an hour can be expected from these three-litre cars on this high banking, where they get a tremendous pounding from the rough surface and the strain imposed by centrifugal force before they swoop down onto the road circuit again, where cornering power and handling are at a premium. Come va, Nino? Commendatore? Good afternoon, Nina. Madame Sarti. Dov'è Jean Pierre? È vicino al camion, commendatore. A tutta l'heure, Madame Sarti. Have you met Miss Frederickson? Madame Sarti. Hello, Marie. Hello, Louise. So you are leading in points for the championship, Nino. But not by as many points as I would like, Madame Tsar. All you have to do is to beat my husband. The question is, is he ready to be beaten? Please excuse me. I have some work to do back at the hotel. Nino, tell Jean. Quite good looking, isn't she? Yes. Of course. For one who cares for the time. Yes. Excuse me, Madame Sartre. The question is, Jean-Pierre, what are you going to do about it? Do? I don't understand. The time for losing comes to every man, of course. I had not expected yours to come so soon. There have been problems with the car. Come, come, Sati. I expect excuses like that from lesser men than you. You have been one of the best that ever lived. There is no question of that in my mind. Never a wrong move. The concentration always there, 100%. Until this woman. You have been misled, Signor Manetta. Do you take me for a trained dog to jam at the snap of your fingers? My life belongs to no one but myself. I've been thinking seriously of your retirement, Sarti. Then retire me now. Of course, I will not retire you now. Tomorrow there is a race to be run, and I also well know that you want to drive it. But after tomorrow, who knows, Jean-Pierre? After tomorrow, Signor Manetta, I will decide to retire or not. Sati, you are even further gone than I thought. A pity, a great pity. I always considered you to be the best. 
I'm still the best. What brings you to Monza, Monique? Business, of course. Of course. Nina wonders if you're ready to be beaten. No one is ever ready for that. You will never retire, Jean-Pierre. What does it matter to you, Monique? To me? Yeah. As always, as a hero, you're a good asset to the company. Well, perhaps I'm tired of being an asset for the company. And tired, too, of this farce we perform, you and I, for public consumption. But it doesn't really matter that you are tired of these things, Jean-Pierre. If you should decide not to continue with the, the farce, as you call it, that, of course, is entirely up to you. But it will make no difference. As long as you're my husband, the company will have the prestige of your name, and whether or not you ever step into one of these again. And you will always be my husband. You know that, don't you? This one, it may be different to you, but not to me. To me, she's just like all the others. And we will always be married, you and I. Stay away from me, Monique. Let me alone, please. Tell me. What terrible thing have I done to you that makes you want to nail me to this absurd life we have together? Hmm? What terrible thing, Monique? Do you think it's been worth it, Pat? All the efforts, even if I win tomorrow? Worth it to you? Only you can know that, Scott. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, <laughs> let's go and have a party. Scott, are you sure you want to go? Wouldn't you rather rest? After tomorrow, I should be a long time resting. Come on. Have I thanked you? For what? For being here. Thank you. Hey, sayonara! My goodness, Nino, I thought they belonged to the Yamora boys. I have them on temporary loan. Really? Two of them? They are very small. See you later, maybe. <laughs> Can I buy you a drink? I don't drink. I don't smoke. in. 
I looked at the photographs last night. Very good. Thank you. And what you wrote, also very good. Well, your work may be finished, but mine is not. It's dying. I don't want to see the race, John Pierre. Why not? Because I'm ashamed. Ashamed? Of what? Of what it's meant to me, I suppose. The racing. And now, knowing what it means to you, the uncertainty, I don't want to watch anymore. Ever. You're being very foolish, you know. Let me be foolish, then. I'm going to win today. You don't want to miss that, do you? Please, John. I don't want to go. To work then. I love you, Jean Pierre. And I, you. We'll have to discuss the consequences of those terrible words. Bene, a girarlo e portarlo, ma tieni la sotto e tieni da conto, eh, perché, perché è una cosa che può essere Magari. utile. Come va? Vuoi là? Come va? Mister Mascati. Ehi, where were you last time? Where were you? Come here. Am I expected to account for my whereabouts at every moment? Am I? It is not the same thing. You are a woman. I'm leaving you. Leaving? For how long? For always, you fool. Forever. Hmm. I met a boy, an American, who wants to go to the Quick Islands and dive for relics. In the first place, diving is a great bore. How do you know? Have you ever done it? Some things one can tell without doing them, that they will be a great bore. And the water is for fish, not people. In the second place, they are not relaxed at all. I have on good authority from a close friend that these things are manufactured and then dumped into the water to be found by foolish American boy tourists. And the girls who are foolish enough to go with them. This is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. I have it on very good authority from a close friend. Do you want me to stay? You're old enough to make your own decision. Then I'm going, all right? Yes, I definitely think you should go to the Greek islands with your American boyfriend. I think you should go to hell. Going to be in the pitch today? The last time this combined circuit was used was in 1961. There were objections from drivers who thought that like one and a half litre Formula One cars of that time were not suitable for the strain imposed by the banking, bearing in mind that the suspension had to be a compromise setting to allow for effective cornering on the road section as well. However, the bigger cars of the present formula should be better able to stand up to the conditions. 
Pat. How are you? Okay. You? All right. Hope he beats you by at least 10 laps today. I'm glad you feel that way. What if he doesn't? We'll survive it one way or another. Good luck. has 27 points in the championship, exactly the same as Jean-Pierre Sarkis. In the lead with 28 points is Nino Barlini, while Pete Aaron has 26. In just two hours, one of these men will be the new world champion. Cinque secondi. particular problems in driving on the Monza banking? A banking? Well, it's just so damn rough up there that the car flicks all over the place. We're never below 180, you know. And at that speed, your reactions can barely keep up with these sudden changes in direction. The trouble is, the high centrifugal forces push the car into the banking and use up all the suspension movement. So what you're driving becomes a car with no springs. It feels like you're getting a series of punches in the back. I hate it. I'm sick of pain. But it's what the car is suffering that really worries me. Because no matter how the car is set up, it bottoms at several places on both bankings. The underside of the car just comes crashing down onto the biggest bumps. Everything's shaking and banging all the time. Sometimes you could swear the whole thing's falling to bits. None of us like Monza very much. It's a damn fast, and when he runs so close together, it requires fantastic concentration and rather special skills. Uh, Slipstreaming, for instance. At speeds reaching 180 miles an hour, a race car is making a big hole in the air. And as the car goes through, the air rushes back into the hole and creates a hell of a draft. A draft strong enough to pull a following car along at, oh, 10 miles more than his usual top speed. Yours is the last car in a bunch. You can get a terrific tow. You can back way off the gas pedal and maintain the same speed. And then you can put your foot down, pull out of the slipstream, and maybe overtake uh, two, three cars at once. The only thing to do here 
is to drive just as fast as you know how and hope your car doesn't break. of the fifth lap, Barlini's in the lead by five seconds. Now both Stoddart and Aaron have lost the Ferrari slipstream, and they're dropping back in their great dice for second place. Arundel is andato fuori strada sulla parabolica. Sagetti lo passa. Arundel sembra indenne. Ma c'è olio sparso sulla pista. La corsa continua. Number four, Jean-Pierre Sarti's Ferrari in 14th place, with 10 laps gone and only 18 seconds behind Barlini, after losing nearly half a minute when his engine stalled at the start. With 40 laps to go, Sarti could still catch the leader and win the race. Are you never afraid? Not ever. Why? Because uh, I am immortal. Why do you drive racing cars? Or do you not think about it? Ah, uh, Monsieur Mora. I don't think there's one of us who doesn't ask himself at least once in the middle of a race, what the hell am I doing here? Of course, when it's over, we conveniently forget that we ask ourselves that question. I think about it. There are a lot of reasons, I don't know. Maybe to do something that brings you so close to the possibility of death and to survive it is to feel life and living so much more intensely. Not 
need downstairs, Mark. You can't go downstairs. Look, I'm getting up the stairs. I can certainly get down. Worst comes to the worst. I can all slide down the banisters. Right? Yes. Barlini is always in touch. Comunque, the public acclaims the French Sardi, who is surpassing one after the other. Ora sul rettifilo sorpassa Paghetti, Arundelle e Anderson, trovandosi quindi in undicesima posizione, a circa 16 secondi da Barlini. Sarti ha ripreso 10 secondi in 14 giri ed è adesso la macchina più veloce sul circuito. Con 26 giri rimasti potrebbe ancora vincere il campionato del mondo. This isn't good, you know what I feel now. What do you feel? that I would almost rather stay here with you than get into the car. Ah, almost. I suppose at my age, one moves slowly from one habit to the next. I must go, darling. Sardi, piena velocità, si sta avvicinando alla Brabant di Hull. Ecco, adesso la pasta. Sarti è adesso in decima posizione a 14 secondi da Barlini, sempre in testa. on his 17th lap. His Ferrari is just a bit too fast, even for Pete Aaron Jamura and Scott Stoddard's BRM. They're in second and third places. And there's a splendid scrap for fourth place, with Tim Randolph in the second Jamura, just ahead of Dan Gurney in the Eagle and Bob Turner in the other BRM. This time, Sarti's going to catch up with the three cars fighting for fourth place. He's passed him round off of the Japanese Emir, and now watch him go underneath Gurney in the Eagle. Yes, he's passed him, and now he's passing Bob Turner in the BRF. He's fourth. Sarti's fourth. There are three slower cars just in front. When Sarti's left them, he'll only have Aaron and Stoddart between him and the leader, Barlini. <laughs>
secondo Berlini completerà il 35 giro. Rimangono 5 giri. Berlini precede di 10 secondi l'americano Aaron e l'inglese Stoddard che lottano per il secondo posto. Il commendatore... Il commendatore sta uscendo dal box la bandiera nera in mano. Giù, giù. Si avvicina alla pista. Forse richiama i piloti. Vuol dire che Sarti è morto. Sarti è morto. The Commander Tor is showing a black flag to his drivers. He's withdrawing the whole Ferrari team. I don't think it's been done like this for about 40 years. The Alfa Romeo team manager did the same thing once in the 20s, when Antonio Ascari was killed in the French Grand Prix. He showed the black flag to Campari and Brilli Perry when the Alphas were in the lead. He'll have to be told the terrible news of his team leader's death. And this tragic race is over for the young Sicilian. In the lead are Aaron and Stoddard. They've just gone past the pits, side by side, fighting for the lead.
Keith Carron is greeted as the winner of the Italian Grand Prix, and this gives him the World Drivers' Championship. A great triumph for this determined American driver, and for Iso Yumura of Japan, whose cars have challenged and conquered the might of Europe's Formula One teams, in spite of all the years of experience and development behind them. But it's a sad end to this dramatic season of battles for the championship. The tragic fatal accident to the great Jean-Pierre Sarty has cast a shadow over the race. And everyone who knew him or saw him drive will find it hard to accept that his great skill and tremendous personality is lost to us. I'm sure the last thing either Pete Aaron or Iso Yomura would have wished is for it to end this way. Pete, do you ever get tired of the driving? Lately, I sometimes get very tired. You know what I mean? Very tired.